information um, so if you got any new information y'all can email it to me or email it to ask them but we would like to get that out as soon as possible so we could be up to date I think I heard that one of the last one was up here was 2006 and that was just a little bit too bad <laughs> so we need to update it so we have everybody's contact Any other announcements this morning? They had prom last night. Everybody looked pretty dressed up. I'm sure, they had a long night. Uh, the fire, fire department youth fundraiser was a success last week for anybody that went and bought tickets from the week before. They had 500 tickets, I think, they sold them. Um, we've had some good guest speakers the last two Sundays. Jeremy did a great job last Sunday and the, and the week before the youth did, and we're excited to have. An old friend of the church and member, Robert Ledbetter, here today. Um, He's got a few visitors daughter. here. And his daughter's here, his granddaughter, and two daughters. Yeah. So thank y'all for being here and uh, look forward to the message today. You remind me, people that are not, or just haven't been here for the first time, I, I'm not going to preach. <laughs> you are in people. our service. <laughs> they asked me if we pass a collection plate twice since I may not get up the long. <laughs> She's been here for a while. I told uh, I told Reverend Kate uh, a while back. I was here, I guess half a year ago, and Wayne wasn't here that Sunday. And uh, I was in the pulpit, and I told Reverend Kay, I said, I'm not coming back and, and filling in for you unless you're guaranteed that he's here to play. <laughs> he said, Robert, he's going to be here. So I called him to make sure. So <laughs> <laughs> thank you for having me this morning. I was excited to be back in the church. Uh, to have, uh, especially my granddaughter here. Uh, Molly is like many others. She graduated from high school and from an associate's degree from the college, SVCC, in May. And I believe in June, we're sending her away to San Antonio. The picture is part of the world. Actually, it's the training grounds for the U.S. Air Force. So she signed up to go into the Air Force in, in June. So we're sending her away. <laughs> Could have been a little bit closer. It's a long way to stand. That's God's country. <laughs> <laughs> we had no choice of which one she decided to go with. <laughs> well, thank you for having me this morning. Thank you, Sir Richard, for giving the introduction. And uh, I, I would have it's just two things that uh, I hope I've included in my part is that you pray for the safe return of. Uh, Reverend Kay and Esther, that they have a safe journey back, a swift journey back, and not a lot of problems that you also encounter when you make long trips. I'd also ask if you would keep a friend of mine and someone that some of you know very well, <coughs> Reverend Mike Day at Antioch Church, has not been very well for the last two or three weeks. And I'd like for you to keep, uh, to keep Reverend Day at a little special point of your prayers. Thank you, I would mention that. John, didn't you tell me where he John? Didn't you tell me the rest of the moon was either there today or the rest of the moon was there last week speaking at Antioch Church? He was there last week, yes. Some of you remember that's Russell Moon's son, and he's also been here several, several, several long years ago. But I uh, meant that I told you I said I would like to go and hear him, but I was not able to be here. If you'll join me, please, while I open here for the opening prayer. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common application and supplication to you. And you have promised through your will, beloved Son, that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. In Christ's name, Amen.
Join me, please, in our call to worship this morning. Call to be branches in Christ's body. You are to be connected to the vine. Call to be mustard bushes offering shade to God's creatures. We search for places to plant the seeds of faith. Call to be growing with God in the midst of this world's painful questions. We see, we see God's nurturing presence. Amen. Thank you. Opening hand this morning is one of my favorites. It's in the garden. Number 314. In the garden. Carol's in there next week. 
ahead, right? Okay. Here. You're going to be next to me, right?
Dear God, thank you for the springtime and the opportunity to remind ourselves to not only plant our physical seeds to grow and bloom, but remind us to plant seeds in our own heart that honor you and help others learn more about you. In your name we pray. Amen. Jimmy, if you don't mind, I can finish my sermon. <laughs> so you're yeah, going to do that. Pretty much of that day on the book. Thank you, Hayes. If you would join me, please, in our prayer of illumination at the bottom of the bulletin. All is close, Holy Spirit. As the Spirit is fed, the Word is made. The Word is made in our heads and in our hearts. And all the words slip away. May there be one who is here today. Just didn't 
take for many people. It is the right thing to do to be told and spread the message regardless of where it falls in our environment or who hears it. It's our job to spread the news. And we just have to accept that some are not going to get it. Sorry to say, some of the old time Baptist good preachers would say they're going to end up in hell. Our job is to try and save as many as we can. Jesus told you in Matthew, and the scripture said in his final chapter, I believe, he says, Go and be disciples to the whole world. Spread the message to everyone. That is the Great Commission. Now, I'm speaking not about the seed, I'm speaking about the sower, the one who spreads the message. Jesus is talking not only to the people around him, but he's pointing to all. Everybody out there, not just his disciples when he spreads his joy. He's talking to all the people who are listening to him. He tells them, you are the ones who are my disciples. You are the chosen ones. You that are hearing this, you are the chosen ones. You will be charged with preaching the message. You have to go out there. And he says, here are some clues about what might happen. In context, Christ saw, said some of your message will be given to people in places that are so hardened in their beliefs that they will never accept it. They will just ignore it or toss it off the seed of salvation and to change the life. This is part of the journey of being one who spreads the message. He said, as my followers, you will spread the news to those who will be, that I have often said there will be some seeds and some words and sometimes you will be among the weeds and they will grow around you and try to destroy your message. We see the, the weeds today in society. We see what they're trying to do to the church. We see that what they're trying to do with the Christian message. These are weeds trying to choke us out. Christ also says to his disciples, there will be many false prophets claiming to have the good news, but actually subverting the truth of Christianity. He said there will be many who hear what you have to say as gospel. You tell it, go forth and save the lost of this world. He said, but there are some who when they hear the message become so excited and so convinced that they go out and become exceptionally good disciples and are out saving and, and, and recruiting people. But after a while, they just seem to wear out and give up. Have you ever seen somebody that's so excited about something, they would just head over heels in it for, for, for months. And then all of a sudden, well, I really don't care for that anymore. You see that sometimes in that blood, if somebody just excels in something for quite a while, they say, well, I really don't care about doing that anymore. I want to try something else. So Christ is saying, there will be those who, who join and follow and are all out, and then they just kind of die out. I can think of some small churches and some of the large churches. They were so excited when they opened the doors and had all the people in there, and they were Great crowd, but as the years and the past on, the people just seemed to fade away. The message was still there. The message was still good. They just decided they didn't need to be part of it. They lost faith. They lost hope. They lost interest. The positive side of being a sower of the message. If you're going to be one of those sowers and disciples, and I know you are, is that you will see positive results if you go out and talk about Jesus. God will show you changes in people, changes within the church, changes within your community. If you're out there sowing the seed, spreading the message of the gospel, people will, there will be people who accept you. People who believe that Christ is the Messiah and that salvation can be brought by accepting Him and believing in Him. 
Now, sometimes you may be thinking, well, I don't know about all these swords of the seeds you're talking about. Well, let me tell you about some swords of the seed right here in Cambridge United Methodist Church. I'm going to give you a few short examples. When I first came here, I remember an old man walking down that aisle, from this aisle all the way from this side. Walking slowly down, he was a senior. And right behind him were three or four little chaps walking behind him. Right behind him. You know where those little chaps and fellows are today? I see you smile. He was a sword of the sea. Look at the crop he planted. Look at the crop he planted. You remember Rex Wolf and how he used to play those foolish parts for the for the Sunday school and for the uh, Bible study? How he used to play those foolish parts? Do you know how many people he touched by doing that? Do you know how many seeds he planted by doing that? There's another man sitting right there. How many times have I seen you taking taking something up for that Bible school? Every time I can remember seeing Jay, you've been there doing something with Bible school. He's been sowing that seed. Children have watched him and seen him and know what type of man he is. How many seeds are going to be sown by you when you go out with the neighbors helping neighbors? How many people are you going to affect? I can go on and on with the names. I can talk about the Sunday school teachers. I can talk about the young ladies who do the Bible school and do all the other things here. They are sowers of the seeds. They are sowers of the seeds. The seed is being spread. You're spreading the message. This church is full of that. Connie and I just got a call the first of the week. Smile if you remember this name, Norman and Myrtle. Hmm? Got a call from Bert Brooks. Bert, you know, has been a minister. Now he's an administrator for the Cambridge for the United Methodist Church, or he's retired, but he's still active. So Bert calls Connie and I and said, I'm thinking about going on a mission trip to Cuba. I called you because you and Connie went last year. I want to know what it's like. I can just see Norman and Myrtle right now and say, my son, they're going to Cuba. Huh? Talk about sowing the seeds in this church. This church has always been sowing the seeds. I hope it continues. You may not know it. He didn't know it when he walked down that aisle. Rex didn't know that. Norman certainly didn't know his child was going to end up going to mission trip to Cuba. I'd love to hear what he'd have to say. I can see the smile on his face. You all know what I'm talking about. It's our task. It's our task to sow the seed. It's our task to trust God and to move on with the message from the scriptures. It's our responsibility to pro pro promote and, and acknowledge Jesus Christ as the Savior of the world. It's our job to sow the seeds. We, we can rescue others from damnation by spreading the word. We're not the seed. You don't have to be up here in this pulpit, and I'm sure some of you are laughing. How did he ever get up there? <coughs> what kind of seat was that that got Robert up in the pulpit? I don't know. I'm just like you. I'm just like you. I stayed in that pew for 30 years, too. We all have a job to do to inform the world, to let them know the good news that Jesus Christ is the Savior of the world and is their Savior. They have a loving God, and it's our job to tell them about it. Let the world hear your words for happiness in being saved. Send the word out. You are to sow the seed. It doesn't always happen.
be somebody in this church. You sow the seed. You sow the seed. I see these people in my mind right now. I see these people I mentioned. I see it. I know who they are. Here, there, there, here. I know who they are. I know what they look like. And I know that those of you out there, what you've done, there's a great deal more to be done. Sow the seed. Sow the seed. Let it fall where it may. Sow the seed. Tell the world about Jesus Christ. Amen. I'm going to sing that song. Some of you may remember this. Richard, you and John probably remember it very well. <coughs> Jim Schmidt had this song every time he was in a position. Here I am, Lord. You remember me doing that? Yep. Jennifer. So to see. If you join me, please, in hymn number 593. Here I am.
and are learning this portion to you for your service, and you sow this seed in Christ's name. Amen.
you for being here today. I will close with you. May the Lord bless you and keep you and give you peace. Peace.